Hi there. Uh, today we are going to look at installing the new Haviland Wii Smartwave heater, which is what we've got here. To the untrained eye, it may look like any other heater, but there's a few unique features about this, um, and it is very much the next stage in um, personal heating within the home. The heater itself comes with a 13 amp plug, so anybody can fit this. You do not have to be a trained electrician as it simply plugs in. There is no cutting of wires or anything else like that. Um, what makes this heater particularly unique is that once plugged in, there is no programming um, involved whatsoever. Via the sensor located here, the heater monitors your movements in and out of a room and using uh, algorithms within inside the uh, inside the heater itself it learns your behavior and your patterns and your routines and programs itself automatically to come on and off at the appropriate time during the day and amazingly if you change your habits um, and start doing things differently the heater adapts um, and changes its program accordingly the heater itself um, shown here comes with all of the various bits and pieces that you need to fit it. It's got a comprehensive instruction manual to tell you how to install it as in fit it to the wall and also how to um, manually program anything should you want to but you don't actually need to. It comes with two um, installation brackets which are what we use to fix it to the wall um, and some masonry um, bits and plugs to, uh, to fit it to any brickwork. Now today just for, the rep for, for this demonstration, we are fitting onto a plasterboard wall. So I'm going to use my own plasterboard fixings um, that, are, that will be better suited to that particular, uh, that particular surface. The heater also comes with a handy mounting template. Uh, it's a simple cardboard um, square that you rest on the floor and um, the pre-drilled holes indicate uh, where the screw holes need to go on the wall. So very, very easy to use, and we'll be using that in just a second. Okay, so we're going to fit the heater in uh, this area here in the office. Um, there's a little bit of preliminary work um, has been undertaken here prior um, to today. Firstly, there used to be a socket here which we've moved across now into a, into a more sensible location so that we're not fitting the heater in front of a socket. Um, and then we've just covered the, uh, the original back box with a blanking plate, which is um, perfectly adequate now to have the heater in front of it because there's no cables inside. We've also just made sure um, that we know where uh, the buttons are in the plasterboard because this is a plasterboard wall, um, just to make sure that they're not gonna get in the way um, and surprise us when we when we fit the heating uh, fit the brackets of the heater onto the wall. So, first thing we'll do is take the handy mounting guide, uh, the mounting template, and as I said, it's so easy. You simply place it flat on the floor, and the template shows us where the individual drill holes need to be. But it's worth checking with a level just to make sure, because there's plenty of houses where the floor won't be level in relation to uh, the walls. But as you can see there, we're quite happy with that bubble. Um, so we know that once we've marked these, and we come to fit the brackets, the heater will be able to sit comfortably on the wall and will be flat and level. The other thing to bear in mind with the heater, and it says this in the instruction pack, is that it needs to be a minimum of 15 centimetres from the ground. Um, but if you use the template, that's already taken into account for you. So it's very, very handy. So there we have our drill holes ready marked. And all we need to do is fit our plasterboard fixings. I'm just using uh, this particular type and you'll see you just hammer them into the uh, plaster uh, and then using the driver um, you drive the screw which essentially concertinas up this metal area to form a secure fixing on the on the other side of the board enabling us to fix um, the heating brackets nice and securely and each one of these can hold up to uh, around about between 15 and 20 kilograms so they are very very strong.
Okay, so now the brackets are fitted on the wall. The next stage is just to provisionally insert these two uh, screws into the top of the brackets in the pre-threaded little recesses. And what these will be used for is once we've got the heater on, give these a little turn and it just helps lock the heater in place so that it can't fall off of the brackets. So, brackets are now fixed firmly to the wall and it's just a case of hanging the heater, which is a very, very straightforward process. The heater itself on the back has a number of uh, different cutouts on the top and the bottom that correspond with um, the brackets on the wall and these little shapes here. And just so the final thing to do is just to uh, screw the, the two um, retaining screws in that we placed in the top. That also um, allows a bit of fine adjustment on the level if you found that you didn't get your brackets quite right at the beginning. Um, so we'll do that now. Now that uh, the heater is mounted and switched on, you have to do absolutely nothing to program it. Using the sensor, it is already monitoring our movement within the room and building up a pattern of our routine so that it knows when to turn on and when to turn off. Um, but basically, the heater um, has three modes. A comfort mode, which is the temperature that uh, the heater heats the room up to when it detects movement in here. Um, an economy temperature which it drops down to which is a bit lower than the comfort temperature if there's no movement in the room for uh, 30 minutes or more and and then it has an anti-frost temperature which it drops down to after a sort of 12 hour period of inactivity or uh, at night time um, so that uh, the room stays lukewarm and nothing freezes. It's also got some other interesting features, um, for example if you've got young children and you're worried about little fingers interfering with the buttons, you can uh, lock the keypad as well. So once you've set it and you're happy with how it works, even, uh, even your little darlings can't interfere um, with the settings uh, and mess it, mess it all up. Now that, you're, now that your heater's up and running, one of the things you might like to do is just to change the upper, middle and lower temperature limits. Now you can um, get your instruction manual out and press uh, the various up and down arrows and do that manually, or uh, you can add to your um, heater the addition of the i2 control smart box. The smart box uh, shown here is, is a really easy to use device. The box itself, looks like that and it comes with a connection cable that you plug directly into your wireless router or your Wi-Fi adapter with a power cable um, and then what that enables you to do is uh, download the Haviland app to your phone and you can then use your smartphone to control all of the various settings on your heater so you can turn the radiator on and off if you want to you can set the desired temperatures, um, you can monitor the ambient temperatures of the room and adjust their heater accordingly, you can change the modes, you can lock the keypad to keep kids' little fingers out, um, and you can also program the heater um, day by day, even hour by hour should you want to. So it's a great addition um, to the overall um, sort of smart efficiency of this heater and, it, and ultimately it enables you to ensure that when you don't want this heater to be on when you don't want the room to be hot you're not wasting money heating a room that you're not in which is fantastic for the environment and fantastic for pounds in your pocket.